Hello folks, and welcome to your regularly unscheduled program once again. First off, I'd like to thank Hans Chow for the custom artwork in the thumbnail for this video. A playful look at Chris Hemsworth taking over the role of Optimus Prime, standing beside the original Optimus Prime, Peter Cullen. If you'd like to see more of Hans's artwork, he's on Instagram, at Hans underscore Chow. And today, I'm going to be reading some comments from the latest discussion topic that I've put up on both the YouTube community wall as well as on the Facebook page, which is at facebook.com slash michael.mercy. And the topic of today concerns the casting of a new Transformers animated film, which will be released supposedly on July 19th, 2024. You never know these days with these release dates announced so far in advance. But some news has recently come out that it will be an origin story titled Transformers 1, and the cast list has been released, and Chris Hemsworth has been cast as a young Optimus Prime. Now this caused a little bit of confusion because Peter Cullen recently shared in an interview that he had just done some voice work for a Transformers animated movie where Optimus Prime would be young. And he said that it was a good experience he was able to record from his home. And it's nice to hear when Peter Cullen has a good experience on a voice acting job, especially when he's playing Optimus Prime because he's shared some stories about not great experiences he's had in the past. And they were gonna bring me in for the one day because they didn't wanna pay me, you know, for any more than they had to, so. They had actually recorded this guy and I had to impersonate him, impersonating me, and his timing was wrong and his inflections were wrong. He didn't know how to make Prime sincere. I went, oh, this is horrible. I was sickened by it, it made me, it hurt, it hurt. <laughs> Now, I don't really have a dog in this fight in terms of what the final movie is going to be like. I don't really anticipate the release of movies anymore. I've seen a lot of great movies in my life, and I'm pretty happy where I'm at. I don't really get excited and hyped for new movies coming out. I'd much rather just put in an old great movie and watch it at home. So this isn't really something that I'm hoping that the movie will be better. What I'm more interested in is seeing a performer who helped a great deal to create not just a beloved character, but also a very successful brand. I've spoken in some of my other recent videos about how I feel as though there are certain performers, writers, creative people behind the scenes that don't seem to really get the full appreciation they deserve for helping create the brand and make it as successful as it was. Now this, I don't believe, applies to everybody. One example of that I can give you is Christopher Reeve as Superman. He's my Superman and the definitive on-screen Superman for me, live-action Superman. But I don't believe Christopher Reeve really created the love that that character has. I think it was fairly well established before he first played Superman and continues to be a very beloved character, popular character, many years after Christopher Reeve stopped playing him. Mr. Reeve will always be my Superman, but I don't feel as though the Reeve family is owed residuals on anything involving Superman going forward. Obviously, they deserve residuals for any project Christopher Reeve was involved with, but not for any Superman project. But I think there are some creative people and performers who played such a huge part 
in the character's creation and identity that they do own a piece of that property. Larry Hama comes to mind. I've mentioned this a couple of times in the past, specifically as it relates to G.I. Joe, a real American hero in the 80s. I don't think the brand would have been what it ended up being without Larry Hama and the creative input he put into the file cards as well as the comic book. And another that I will add to that list is Mr. Peter Cullen, who voiced the brand new character of Optimus Prime in 1984. It wasn't an existing character that he was taking over. It was a new character. And it's a character that he created, even though he didn't create the design, the look, the toy, obviously, or even the dialogue on the show. I do believe that Mr. Cullen's performance as Optimus Prime was one of those rare, exceptional cases where if he hadn't done as well as he did, I truly believe that not only would Optimus Prime not be as popular a character as he is today, I don't believe Transformers would be as popular a brand as it is today without Mr. Cullen's contribution. So when a project like this is announced and a live action actor, a very successful one like Chris Hemsworth is announced as the young Optimus Prime, and you see clips like this where Peter Cullen is talking about how sometimes he feels pushed aside on projects that he would have happily been a part of. And it's hard sometimes now because they're starting to do Optimus Prime with other people and uh, it hurts, you know, it hurts. But anyway, uh, I got you, that's all I care <laughs> It doesn't seem quite fair. Now I'm looking at this as a payday situation. I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it's a safe bet to say Chris Hemsworth in his career has made a lot more money than Peter Cullen has made in his career in twice the time that Mr. Cullen has been performing. So I don't believe Chris Hemsworth really needs this payday and maybe Peter Cullen doesn't really need it either, but I'm not really a big fan of studios replacing established voice actors for live action actors just to try to draw a bigger audience. I understand that's how Hollywood works and at the end of the day it just comes down to profits, but I firmly believe that a brand like Transformers is bigger than any star you can attach to it. I don't think Transformers needs these big stars and yes they did it in 1986 in the Transformers animated movie, they brought in a bunch of stars, but that was a very different time. And Leonard Nimoy and Orson Welles and Eric Idle weren't exactly at the peak of their careers. Whereas today, they're bringing in the hottest box office attractions in order to try to get more people to come and see these animated films. In this particular case, this being an animated film, and it being an animated character that's being voiced, I think the experience of animated voice work matters a great deal here. And I'm going to show you Chris Hemsworth's voice work history. He has played Thor in Marvel's What If. He played Thor again in the God of Thunder video game. He played Thorg in Loki, a live action show, but it was an animated character. And then there's Optimus Prime in the upcoming Transformers movie. Four voice acting credits. And here is Peter Cullen's voice acting credits.
There's been some speculation about Peter Cullen actually being in this film based on some of those comments he's made and that he will be possibly bookending or narrating the film as an older Prime and Chris Hemsworth will be playing the younger version of Prime, possibly Orion Pax. And if that's the case, some people are thinking that Hemsworth would be more appropriate as a younger Prime and Mr. Cullen's voice is maybe too old and too gravelly to perform Prime at a younger age. And that's an interesting thought in this day and age where voices can be analyzed with AI and now we can have Darth Vader with a younger James Earl Jones's voice and we can see a deep faked young Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker with a younger Mark Hamill's voice instead of having the modern day Mark Hamill voicing Luke Skywalker. So yes, it is possible for Peter Cullen to voice a younger version of himself either through the technology of AI or with just Peter Cullen doing it himself. A lot of people aren't aware of his range of voice acting talent in addition to his trademark deep husky voice that he's used in many different cartoons. He was also the voice of Murky Dismal on Rainbow Bright and used a voice that sounds absolutely nothing like his Optimus Prime voice. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I personally don't see why his regular speaking voice, the way he speaks at conventions or in interviews, wouldn't be an appropriate voice for a robot named Orion Pax, who's potentially hundreds or thousands of years old. All these years later, that I would be sitting in a room with people that I, I love and care for, that care for me and uh, mean so much to me, I wouldn't trade places or anything in the world for this. I think the bottom line is that they just don't want to pay him what he's worth. And they don't want to acknowledge his contribution to the character and to the franchise. And for people who think it's not something that's possible, I'd like to remind them that Harrison Ford appeared in two more Star Wars films after Return of the Jedi. Because in Hollywood, anything is possible, if you know what I mean. And I feel strongly about this because I don't feel as though Mr. Cullen has been shown the full amount of respect that he deserves. There has been respect shown, and he has been put in the Transformers Hall of Fame, whatever that means. But when I did a search for images of Peter Cullen with Optimus Prime, there actually aren't that many of them around. There's a few shots of him with the truck from the Michael Bay movies. And then there's the one where he's holding an Optimus Prime voice changer helmet in his hand. But there's actually very few pictures of Peter Cullen with Optimus Prime for some reason. One of the best you'll find of him is from Australia, where he's with Old Trenchy, who's in an incredible Optimus Prime costume. But that wasn't a promotional photo shoot arranged by Hasbro. That was set up by some fans. And here's Mr. Cullen alongside Old Trenchy in the Optimus Prime costume and Sean Fuster from the award-winning Just Lawful podcast. And I'm at a loss as to why this man who has played this character for 40 years and a very, very large number of people not only like his performance, but love it and are quite touched and inspired by it. I don't understand why there isn't more of Peter Cullen with the image of Optimus Prime on Hasbro's dime, courtesy of some promotion arranged by Hasbro themselves. He seems more like just a performer to them than an integral part of the character. And let's be honest, that will most likely never change. But that doesn't mean we can't stop asking Hasbro to do the right thing. Because when a man like Peter Cullen says something like this, It hurts. You know, it hurts. Something has gone seriously wrong behind the scenes. And quite frankly, I'm tired of people not being fully honored until they've passed away. That's my thoughts on the matter, and now on to your thoughts. Thank you to everyone who contributed. We're starting with 
Mike Wilson 858 who says, I understand that Hasbro wants to get new fans, but the voice actors from the G1 cartoon define those characters and should have the parts as long as they're alive and willing. It's like James Earl Jones and Darth Vader. It would be sin to get Dwayne Johnson or someone else to voice him to reach a younger demographic. Rare Bit Fiends says I wish Cullen would play the role until he no longer wishes to. He's a living legend and a kind gentleman. Rodimus Prime NR8NE says Peter Cullen should do what James Earl Jones did and have his voice digitally rendered so the true voice of Optimus Prime can remain for generations to come like Darth Vader's will be. Dragon Tail 49 says, I'm happy to see someone else given the opportunity to define the role for the next generation of fans. My only hope is that, as the Hollywood trades have speculated, Peter will serve as the film's narrator, in effect telling the story of his younger self. That would be the best of all worlds. Thank you for your comment. Crazy Bear 31 says, Voice acting is the most underappreciated profession in entertainment. I abhor Hollywood using film actors to do voice acting. That said, I think Chris Hemsworth does have a great voice. If the characters are well written, I think this might work. Thank you for your comment and also for pointing out that voice acting and live action acting are very different beasts. And it's wrong to assume that a live action actor can simply walk into a recording studio and do a great voice acting role. They're very different. It's like a stage actor trying to do a movie. Some of them were very successful crossing over, like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, but many of them weren't able to make the adjustment. I'll bring wrestling up as well. There are very few wrestlers who made it as great actors, even though wrestling and acting is in the same vein. The number of great wrestlers who were able to give great performances is very small. The Rock, Batista, Roddy Piper are some of the few that come to mind. Many of them were not able to translate their talents from the ring onto the movie set. And the same goes for live action actors having to stand still, not move around all that much, not have any sets or other people to play off of sometimes and summon a great performance in a very stoic, quiet, still environment. It's a completely different science. The next comment is from I Want to See Mr. Show, who says, The only tough thing about Cullen doing Prime's voice is for those of us who know, we'll know he's aged and sounds quite a bit different, and it'll be hard to overlook that and it'll remind me that Optimus is never going to be quite the same as he was. On the other hand, please, for the love of God, have Frank Welker voice Megatron, please. Thank you for your comment and for mentioning Frank Welker, who deserves just as much respect for his contribution to Transformers. Robert H. 9664 writes, Cullen is a great actor, and I'll want him back for every live-action film until he passes. But he was considered too old to be young Optimus back in the 80s and is definitely too old for young Optimus today. Optimus has been and will be voiced by many different actors. This isn't shocking and no one will have a problem with it after the movie comes out. Snarkicon DM 6928 writes, I honestly can live with Hemsworth if he is playing Orion Pax and then Cullen took over the voice after he became Optimus. Octavius Fuchs, 7194, writes, Once a prime, always a prime. Cullen all the way. E-K-O-D-D Link writes, The only reason I wouldn't want Peter Cullen is because after his mistreatment from studios, as well as him announcing his retirement from the role, I think what he really wants or needs is just some time with his family and loved ones, as well as the fans he meets around the world. He's earned a good rest with the amazing legacy he left behind. Hunter the Frick 4909 writes, While yes, Peter Cullen might be nice, I would rather want someone else to have a chance at the role. Plus, Peter might not fit the role as a younger prime as much as the older, wiser prime we're used to. 
although if any existing voice actors for Optimus Prime had to replace Chris, it might have to be David Kay for his portrayal of animated Optimus Prime. G.I. Joe and Star Wars Guy writes, I think they should get great voice samples of young Peter Cullen and then use AI to recreate young Peter Cullen's speech to do the voice, like they did with young Luke in the Book of Boba Fett. Draws Walker 9 writes, I love Peter, however, I want to see where they venture with the storyline and with the whole cast together. This is before getting disappointed over one element that may not tingle my palate. Ray Ray 5076 writes, Keep it OG until there aren't any other options. Tim Cassie 87 writes, I have a great saying. There's no better Batman than Adam West. There's no better Optimus Prime than Peter Cullen. Void Weller 8343 writes, I feel like have Chris Hemsworth as Orion Pax, but then have Peter Cullen when they reveal Prime. Mr. Will 7980 writes, Hemsworth sounds like he could be a good Orion Pax. They really should have gotten Gary Chalk. He really sounds like a young Optimus. And Keith Herrickson 3464 concurs, I would love to see Gary Chalk again. Alan Blanks writes, they need to let Cullen and Welker do Prime and Megatron until AI can take over, with their blessings and compensating them for their likenesses. I understand recasting and trying to pull audiences. Thor can be this iteration of Cliffjumper or the young characters you build up. They won't be able to afford Thor after a few movies, and they'll be recasting again and again. He's awesome and I wish him well. Remember the time they recast a well-known actor to replace William Shatner for Star Trek Generations? No? In 1994, Steven Seagal was still famous. Did anyone want Captain Kirk to be recast with Steven Seagal? Because he was popular then and would have taken any role to do anything. I'm sorry to put this out there, but there it is. Steven Seagal doing an impression of William Shatner playing James T. Kirk. Thank you for that, Alan. Nostalgic Dude 5033 writes, I say Chris because this is supposed to be an origin story. Russo Glass Splinter 6797 writes, I love them both, but I have to go with the OG, Peter Cullen. Stephen IP 8XO writes, Peter Cullen, he's a living legend and a kind gentleman. Spray Painted Kappa writes, I wouldn't have minded a different actor to play a younger prime, just not Chris Hemsworth. Michael Alex Kawa writes, I have nothing against Chris Hemsworth, but I would prefer it to be Peter Cullen, or some other voice actor. I hate when they recast celebrities in animated movies, so for me I have a slight issue with the whole cast list. I know why they do it, and yes, someone could say it was done for the 86 movie, but that just felt different than this, maybe because it was a mixed bag of voices for the 86 movie, or maybe because the celebrities in that movie have great voices. And this casting is almost as bad as the one for Earthspark. I love Alan Tudyk, but I hate his Optimus Prime, and he has had experience with voice work. So who knows how Hemsworth will be in this role. Like I said, I am not saying only Cullen can play him, just am unsure about the choice. Blee Neo 101 writes, Um, that's sacrilege to even ask, good sir. Darren Drozdoff, probably not the wrestler, writes, I actually refused to watch the Netflix Fall of Cybertron trilogy purely for the reason of no Cullen or Welker. You could say I boycotted it. Tall Joke says, can it just not be the most basic dull set of actors? Dale Thomas 3277 writes, Hemsworth is vastly overrated. Outside of Thor, there isn't much on the horizon for him. And Lex Lewis 550 writes, I was a seven-year-old kid in 1984 when I heard Generation 1 Prime. Cullen is my prime. The saga continues. And over on the Facebook page, Jimmy writes, I can't hear him as Optimus. Cullen is Optimus. Optimus is Cullen. But if he's voicing Orion, I think that could work. And Adam writes, It's tough to not have Cullen as prime, but understandable as his voice does now show his age, unless they can digitally make it younger. So thank you to everyone who shared their opinions. And once again, apologies if I wasn't able to read your comment. And in addition to asking for opinions, I also put up a poll on the YouTube community wall. 
with the posting. As of right now, there's been almost a thousand votes, and it's 85% in favor of Peter Cullen over Chris Hemsworth. So even if Peter Cullen has a small role in the movie, I think this poll clearly shows that the majority of people would have preferred a featured role instead of a cameo. And I personally hope that because of his contribution to the franchise over four decades, I hope that Mr. Cullen is being paid not as much as Chris Hemsworth, regardless of the size of his role. I hope he's getting more than Chris Hemsworth is being paid. Because if he hasn't earned that type of respect, then who has? Thanks again to everybody who contributed. Thank you for watching and listening along. And thank you for subscribing as well. If you're not subscribed, to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Thank you to the Patreon members for showing your support of the channel. And thank you to the channel panel, the people who have hit the join button to become channel members. And until next time, Nerd Mistake.